So you've been introduced to light, uh, light mapping with Beast very quickly in the previous video. Now we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about uh, Beast and we're going to do some test renders start to get this thing squared away. So back here to the light mapping window under the bake settings. These settings as I've said before uh, will determine the quality of your uh, light mapping. It will also determine the way that it looks and how fast or how slow you render. Okay. So we saw what the default settings were. The default settings I don't really recommend simply because they're kind of overkill and they'll take a really long time to render. But right now let me talk a little bit about these settings and I'll go over some of the most common parameters uh, and talk a little bit about it. So the first parameter appears mode which is set to dual light maps by default. You should leave this at dual light maps. Basically what this does is it creates two light maps. One for when the camera is really far away from the object and another for when the camera is close to the object. What this allows you to do is it allows you to blend in shadows, real-time shadows, with light map shadows um, perfectly seamlessly. So the player never even notices. Okay? If you use single light maps, your light mapping is going to go by a lot faster. Okay? You're going to light map faster, but your, uh, your shadow blending is not going to work very well. Okay? So that's something that you want to uh, keep in mind. So if I go here to single light maps, you can see the way that the shadows look right here. If I go to dual light maps, this looks a little bit better. Uh, the shadowing just looks a lot better. It's more realistic and more accurate. So you want to leave dual light maps on uh, most of the time. Now the quality here is just a quality preset. I could set this to low quality and it's going to try to change my settings to a low quality preset, which uh, theoretically renders faster and has lower quality. The high quality preset uh, makes you render very very slow, changes the final gather rays as you can see when I switch between the two. Low automatically sets final gather rays to 200, contrast threshold to 0.1. If I set it to high, changes that threshold from contrast to 0 0.05 and final gather rays to 1000. Okay, So that's all that does. Bounces, this is pretty important. We can set up the four bounces. What bounces are is bounces of light. In real life, light uh, energy, light photons bounce off of objects tons and tons of times. They just keep bouncing all over the place uh, like little energy packets because that's essentially what they are. Okay. In uh, Inside of Beast, we have the ability to set how many bounces we want to do. One bounce is the default. One bounce usually gives you pretty good results and renders decently fast. If you add more and more bounces, you'll just have more bounce light in your scene bouncing around and your render time is going to get much longer and much slower. The skylight color, as the name suggests, changes the lighting for the skylight because if I look right now, you can see that these shadowed areas that I light mapped earlier have this kind of bluish tint to them. That's because the skylight color has this kind of very soft blue color to it, which is usually the the uh, indirect kind of lighting of sky in real life when you have a normal afternoon day and uh, and it's not rainy outside it's nice and shiny blue skies you usually have that kind of skylight color so you have the ability to choose that color and change it as you see fit okay we have a skylight intensity by default this is set to zero if it's set to zero you're not going to get this really nice skylighting color uh, kind of bleeding onto objects and in shadowed areas so you usually want to turn that on. I find that a setting of 0.5 works out pretty good. If you set it too high, then you're going to lose your shadows because these shadowed areas are going to have this really intense skylighting color right there, and that may not look very good. So that's something that you want to take into account and watch out for. 0.5 again works out pretty good. Now the bounce boost, I recommend leaving this at default. However, you can increase the bounce boost. The bounce boost is basically going to boost up that indirect lighting. Okay, So instead of adding more bounces to your scene, which increases render time, you might want to increase the bounce boost. Um, it's not like increasing the number of bounces. It won't increase render time significantly, but it'll help to boost up that bounce lighting, spread it a little bit more in your room. The bounce intensity works very similar. Basically, it just intensifies the uh, the levels of that bounce lighting. So if you think that your bounce lighting is a little bit too dark, you want to boost it up and make it brighter. You can increase that boost in, uh, that bounce intensity. Final gather rays. This is probably one of the main settings here in Beast. Um, if you're used to working with renderers like Mental Ray or B Ray or anything like that, then you'll know what final gather rays are. If not, 
well then final gather rays will determine the quality of your uh, your light mapping here so if we have less final gather rays like let's say 32 for example you're going to get very low quality renders but they're going to be extremely fast so I recommend using a setting of about 32 or maybe 64 to go ahead and get yourself fast preview renders okay when you're ready to do your final render for your scene your final light map render you want to increase the final gather rays however the default setting for high is set to a thousand honestly that's overkill you don't need to do a thousand final gather rays unless if for whatever reason you really want to but honestly it's overkill you don't need that contrast threshold you should leave this at the default 0 0.05 works out pretty good uh, it just gives your your light maps better quality and more accuracy interpolation and interpolation points I recommend leaving this uh, at the default uh, unless you're an advanced user you might want to play with these basically if you're getting kind of blotchy results and it doesn't look very good inside of your scene uh, and your light mapping looks strange you have too many artifacts you might want to increase the interpolation a little bit and the interpolation points but uh, as you increase those settings you start to lose some of the light mapping accuracy so be careful with that ambient occlusion gives you ambient occlusion if you know what ambient occlusion is you've probably worked with renderers like mental ray v-ray things like that if you're not familiar with what ambient occlusion is basically what it does is areas where there's contact shadows that is areas where two pieces of geometry get really close like say the corners of where these walls meet uh, underneath the trash dumpster over here things like that uh, areas that are very tight in space become darkened up um, you don't have to use ambient occlusion I like to if you do use ambient occlusion you'll notice that these ambient occlusion settings will appear here in the bottom uh, using ambient occlusion will increase your render time so it slows things down when you're doing your light mapping however it can increase or, or give you uh, nicer uh, light mapping um, using it is not an issue of being right or wrong okay you don't have to use it but uh, I like to darken up shadowed areas of my scene so I like to use ambient occlusion okay now the atlas options down here these are actually pretty important what lock atlas does it locks the um, the size uh, of the uh, actual atlas being used for light mapping um, I like to leave that off so that beast has the flexibility to choose how many uh, maps we're gonna use for the light mapping now the resolution is very important however the resolution this is something that can really increase your render times by an hour or more okay basically the way this works is pretty simple if we increase the resolution and this is based on texels per world unit okay if we increase it by default you probably notice that it was set to 50 50 is a very high setting in fact I would say it's overkill if you have a resolution of 50 that's ridiculously high that's gonna take forever to render okay so you might not want to go with 50 when you're doing test renders you might want to go with something like 10 10 I find renders out pretty fast and gives you good enough quality set when you're doing test renders you can see what's going on okay so 10 is pretty good when you're ready to do a final I would go with something like maybe 15 or 20 okay uh, you don't really want to go over 20 once you start going over 20 your render times of light mapping are going to shoot through the roof and uh, be ready to take very 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 long lunch and coffee breaks okay all right so that does it for the bake settings maps over here uh, what we can do is change the array size array size just basically adds more of these light maps so if I go back to uh, bake settings remember this lock atlas parameter over here if we lock it down basically what we do is we can go to maps and we can choose the array size so right now the array size is two see how there's a zero here and a one here this is the first light map this is the second basically what unity or beast does is it takes your entire scene or everything you have selected as a static object and it basically breaks them up and splits them into different maps so the more maps we have the better quality our light mapping is going to be so if we set this to say an, an array size of six we're going to have up to six different slots for maps so now these 1k maps will be spread out a lot better for our objects if we use just one map all of the objects in our scene have to be squeezed onto that one map so everything working on a 1k map won't look very good but you usually don't have to change the array size I recommend leaving it alone just go into the bake settings and leaving the lock atlas off this way when you go ahead and bake your light maps based on this resolution um, 
the system automatically looks at your scene and automatically chooses these maps for you. So if you have a big complex scene, as long as this lock atlas is turned off, Beast will automatically look at your scene and go, okay, well, this person has X amount of objects. They want a, resol a texel resolution, say 15 or 20 or 10 or whatever it is. And it'll automatically choose the, uh, the best number of light maps to use for your scene. Okay. So I recommend not even messing around with these settings. There's really no need to, unless you really want to get in there and do things manually. Um, then you can feel free to do that. Okay. So that pretty much is going to do it for these light map settings. I hope that uh, demystifies some of these settings for you. Because if you're new to this, you know you can look at some of this stuff and go, you know, what in the world does bounce boost mean? What what's a contrast threshold and things like that? So hopefully that cleared up a few of those questions for you. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to end this video and in the next one I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of test renders and then I'm going to do my final render for the scene.